What's going on? Welcome back to Canadian Dividends. So today I want to talk to you about Bell. I want to go over some of the current data points, what's been coming out from the company itself, and go over everything else that you need to know. But first, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. And with that said, let's get right to it. So at the time of doing this video, Bell is sitting at $46.05, pulling down 0.84%. 501,000 shares have been traded so far within the first about two and a half, three hours of the trading day. 2.5 million is the average. And that's actually been one common occurrence over this last week. It's just a very low volume. So again, something to kind of monitor. There hasn't been any recent operational updates ever since their earnings, which did come out at the beginning of May. But aside from that, one thing that really killed Bell's momentum is notes so they did renew some notes on the 16th and then most recently on the 21st so the ones on the 21st 400 million at 5.6 percent comes due august 11th 2053 so this hands down definitely killed their momentum their technicals were looking fairly optimistic that it was going to break out but yeah definitely this is very very poor timing but once again, I'm going to go over the data points and technicals and everything, starting off with shorts. And just for transparency, definitely not saying that Bell is a squeeze play. I'd just like to bring this up to analyze. Right now, short interest is 1.43% of the free float. Cost of borrow average is 0.76%. Based on my last video, which would have been roughly around here on Bell, 1.81% was that short interest. So it has gone down quite a lot. So of course that does insinuate that there's a little bit more optimism that it is actually going to go up, which probably does match with the technicals. But since then, like I said, the whole note issuance or I guess renewing killed well, kind of that a little bit. But moving on, when it comes down to big money getting in, uh, like I kind of said, just they've taken a very notable step back. Last big transactions were on the 22nd. That was a sell for $127,000. Then on the 15th, there was two transactions. Both were buys. But So institutions are clearly either selling or just not even touching Bell because of various aspects. And plus, there's a lot of concerns. Data points on a consumer front haven't necessarily been the best over this last little bit options seems to be a little bit more optimistic so 64% of all the options being done today are optimistic and bullish 331,000 in calls and then 3,400 in puts so when it comes down to technicals I'm just going to go over some of the fit levels and I'll go over and move over to interactive brokers and go over some things for that but with it sitting at $46.05 it is trading right now between this R1 and this R2 so 45.88 will be a strong support level and then 4637 will be that next strong resistance slash target which it did actually get above that i actually got to this r3 but like i said that's just their ill timeliness of their issuance of or renewing of notes and then when it comes to bell uh, this s1 has been the diamond in the rough the saving grace for bell because if it was to have broken below that and stayed below that then this is where things could have gone very very scary but once again we're still not necessarily out of danger on the technical front it's still very much oriented towards a lower percentile on the 52 week range as well so definitely something to continue to monitor quickly going over here on the actual chart itself so we're sitting exactly on that central boiling band it is above that 50 day moving average as well stochastic rsi because of that recent downtrend um, from that 47 50 mark this is where it's kind of reset the technicals quite well you do see a bearish deviation though so the orange line above the bluish if that makes sense so in reality it is starting to be considered somewhat oversold so i think even though it's bad timing from bell standpoint it is somewhat resetting the technicals because for the longest time it did really go up a little bit better than the broader market in fact and so in reality that kind of caused it to get somewhat overbought so i think that's kind of a good thing although at the same time you do see number of retail investors getting out of bell and you can tell that based on the momentum indicator as of late there hasn't been any recent analyst ratings so last one was done 21 days ago and that was obviously associated to their earnings so 52 dollars 54 53 cibc stephanie who has a 60 percent success rate 
rating. Drew, who has a 49. But as a consensus, all the analysts do feel that it's roughly about $50.11 that's compiled from all their ratings. And that is a 8.82% upside from here. But the latest Morningstar report also does show the fair market value for Bell being $60. And so that's based on their assets alone. And as I've brought up in the past, Elliott Wave Technicals, which has been very, very accurate for the most part, it does actually have a pivot point of $45.20. So again, going back to Bell, if it does continue to trend down, definitely need to watch for that $45.20 mark, definitely, because if it does trade below that, then it is anticipated to retest that $44.20 and possibly even break below that to the 4360. But for as long as it is above that 4520, then it is anticipated to get between that 4860 and 4920. So kind of positive stuff. Let me know your thoughts on Bell and if you are buying, if you are selling, what are you doing with Bell? And for instance, are you doing options? Uh, kind of pointed out that a lot of money is getting into Bell through options do you sell covered calls do you sell puts do you even touch bell with options like what's your viewpoint on all of that so let me know your thoughts don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe i always greatly appreciate that and with all that appreciate all of you watching